Yeah, maybe let's let's touch uh, on on the issue of like the the two main uh, IoT communication patterns, which is the, yeah. the client server model and the publish subscribe uh, pattern of communication. Uh, what are the key pros and cons for each that you sure. you, you, you you see there? Well, uh, not surprisingly, it's an, another all of the above scenario, right? Where there's there's perfectly good use cases for each. Um, things like um, it, let's let's go down again at the lowest level. Sometimes many of these devices exclusively uh, support, and I would I would uh, maybe combine with client server more to request response, right? That's kind of a yeah. that side of the equation. So that's how a lot of those protocols have typically worked. You're polling, you know, you're asking the device for something, you get a response. Um, so at some level, we still have a lot of that because the devices need to. Similarly, when we're doing things like invoking, uh, making a request to set a value, or we're asking some uh, some querying our historian, those those fit the client server request response pattern very well. We're start, when we're looking at more real-time data, where I'm interested in new latest values for telemetry, or I'm interested in subscribing to some pattern of events or alarms, those tend to, to fit the pub sub model very well. MQTT, OPC, many, many others. Um, one of the challenges uh, there is um, just basically, once again, you've got to map all these other kind of systems into this namespace, whether it's your OPC namespace or your MQTT namespace. But um, I'm a big believer in PubSub and event-driven or exception-driven applications. Yeah. Typically a lot more uh, efficient. See, you know, you can cache late. If, if 500 people all want to look at the most recent temperature out of a storage vessel, there's no reason we should have to read 500 times to that sort of system. So in a, tra in a traditional kind of request response, imagine that we're loading the, you know, we're loading the system up with 500 requests every 10 seconds. That's kind of silly. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put some, some form of broker in the middle, right? That caches that data. Um, the other, the other um, advantage to that is uh, if you, if you look at the other way, look at, Imagine that data is in the cloud. Um, it's actually surprisingly difficult to do um, pub sub or exception driven communications without a persistent connection. You need to keep a pipe open, right, to the yes. cloud. Yet many cloud architectures are not really well designed for keeping a pipe open, right? They're designed for a website that loads a page and, you know, I, I'm oversimplifying. But this is where there's some complexity in implementing things like MQTT and, and other protocols in the cloud, because it does require a different way to manage those many connections. Um, so architecturally, it brings some of its own, you know, its own challenges with it. Um, and, and, you know, these are all, um, I think the other benefit of building, kind of bringing a, a broker into the middle of some sort is it gives you a place to aggregate data from multiple sources, which is extremely valuable. Whether you want to call it a digital twin or whatever you want to call it, it's still a valuable ability to create kind of a more uh, 360 view of your assets and processes. Um, the second thing it does, which I don't think gets fully appreciated sometimes, many of these source systems have little or no security. If you can plug into them, you can communicate with it. So uh, the ability to kind of use that broker tier as your security and access control tier is also another benefit.